Oxworld.org. Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank on WCCS. It is 947, and our interview segment at this time brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. And we have with us in studio and on our Facebook feed as well today, we have Bonnie Waltz and Bethany Felter from the from the legend, I shall say it as that in that regards. The the uh, I've always wanted to do this because I grew up watching IUP football, so I kind of always wanted to do it. The pride of Pennsylvania, the beast of the East, the IUP marching band. I'm sure you two are sick of hearing it. <laughs> no, never. <laughs> All right, but thanks both of you for joining us here on Indiana in the morning. First off, how's the band doing? Uh. Well, as far as we know, so yeah. we're hoping to make a stop down there today after we uh, talk with you. All right, so you'll you'll get the chance to listen in at that point. Uh, so one of the th- so the thing that you two are have organized is a pretty special campaign. I've not heard of this being done uh, for IEP marching band before. Maybe uh, maybe Bethany, you can tell mm-hmm. us a little bit about it. Yeah, so Bonnie and I are um, on the board for the IUP Legend Legacy, and that's an alumni group. Um, and we help support the efforts of IUP Marching Band, um, get alumni and friends and family involved. So we did this last year, and Levity hosted it, uh-huh. and it was um, a success. Uh, we were able Huge. to donate, uh, have donations of uh, snacks and drinks for the band to eat at the halftime performances. Um, so with the success of that last year, we decided, you know, we kind of want to make this an, an annual annual thing. So uh, we're going to hold it again. So, Bonnie, do you want to kind of say a little bit about it? Sure. Go ahead, Bonnie. Uh, yeah. So um, this uh, helped uh, our former uh, marching band director, Dr. Cheever, last year because we found out that uh, Zach was going to – uh, Walmart and Martin's every Friday night before a game with huge carts, and we were like, "Okay, that's ridiculous." So mm-hmm. we were loading them to- up with like mm-hmm. bottled yep. water and snacks and yep. things like yep. that. Yep. So next Wednesday, uh, the marching band has a a tradition where the end of camp they do something called final zucchini. Uh huh. Um, so you're you're in it to win the golden zucchini, and so we're going to do a <laughs> fill the truck event that night. Uh, parents, alumni, friends, uh, community members can come and donate uh, snacks, drinks, uh, water, Gatorade. Um, but then we're also going to do it, uh, that's Wednesday night at 6 p.m. on the 21st. And then we're also going to be set up to take donations at the uh, parent preview show, which is at the football stadium. Mm-hmm. On August 24th at 7 p.m., we'll be set up in the football parking lot at 6 p.m. to take donations. Now, for that first one, uh, where are the donations going to be accepted? Are they going to be accepted at the practice uh, yeah, area for the, the park? At the RMP parking lot, I believe, oh. is where they're uh, practicing. Okay. Um, so that everything we've been uh, led to uh, be told at mm-hmm. this point, um, of course, it's fluid because now we have a new director. Um, and, and with that being a, a, an alumni, I feel that she'll step right in and, and be doing all the same things, at least for the moment. Um, but yes, should be at the practice field. That's right. IUP did name a new uh, marching band director. So yes. maybe uh, can you inform our listeners on who that is? Do you know? Um, her name is Cassie, and yep. she is um, an alumni grad. She graduated, I think, in 2002 or three. Two or okay. Three. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, so so a person who still knows the program mm-hmm. pretty well. And and was part of the legend. It sounds like, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. That, that's a big. That's a big mm-hmm. important step, right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Now, people don't even think about it because they see the marching band up there. They see them kind of fool around. They do the cheers. They do the the interstitial songs, as I call them, like the the stuff that gets the crowd amped up. They'll play the fight song at the touchdowns and things like that, and try to uh, weave their music in between a cannon fire, if you will. Absolutely. But uh, ROTC. You yep. Do that, huh? But. Uh, but but they but they under, but they also don't understand that it does take a lot to be a part of marching band and it takes a lot of energy. It absolutely does. Um, I know whenever I marched, I was a majorette, and we practiced um, three days a week for two hours, and that was usually from five to seven at night. And then I mean, our weekends for football season were just 
were just crammed with marching band things, whether we were traveling on a Friday and a Saturday. Sometimes we were gone all weekend. So yeah. I think it's a little bit different now um, with the – you know, with the, with the travel when they do try to go to some big shows and some big exhibitions at high schools. Um, but they're at every home game. Um, and yes. sometimes up in the morning, at, if it's an early home game, we're up at 6 o'clock in the morning getting yeah. ready. It. Oh, <laughs> so, they yeah. are doing a little traveling this year. That's great. Uh, Dr. Cheever told me before they left they're going to do a parade in, at the Fort Ligonier days. Okay. So that's my, that's my stomping grounds where I grew <laughs> up. So I was really excited. And then I think that night, it's, a, it's a October 12th, I believe. I think that night they're doing a TOB, Tournament of Bands. Oh, wow. In, in Johnstown. So very close to, too closely uh, in, in ge- geographic speak. That's where something like those snacks and the bottled water can actually come in handy Absolutely. on the bus. Yes. Because they're traveling from show to show that day. Mm-hmm. And they're going to need something. They can, uh, it's probably pretty hard to just make a stop at, say, like a, a Subway or a McDonald's and everybody gets what they need. It probably is best to have those snacks ready to go. You are correct, yes. All right. They'll so, probably get fed, honestly. Yeah. Oh, obviously. Of, I think, that, I think that's the case. feed because they'll know that it's, you know, three or four buses of college-age kids. We always called them freets, free eats. Yeah. So <laughs> you, always, you always made out really good because they were usually homemade uh, things that you wouldn't get yeah. when you were at school. You know, the amazing the things you learn about marching band. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, though, I mean, this is a great thing. So, what are you looking for? You're looking for like uh, what I used to call quarter bags of snacks, right? Absolutely. Quarter yeah. quarter bags of snacks, some healthy things as well. Yeah, like individual packs of like potato chips or chips, pretzels, popcorn. We granola had fruit, bars. Granola bars. We had fruit snacks last year. Mm-hmm. Um, so Even this, small things of cookies. Yeah, Cheez-Its, just anything individual like the bag so we can just take and go. And, and cases then, of water as well. Yes, cases of water, cases of Gatorade. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, they can be the little anything. ones, or they can be the you know sixteen ounce size. Yeah, not, we're not looking for the big one gallon size bottles no, here. We're looking for like individual self yeah. individual serving bottles here, and I, I think that's great. So you're going to have it set up at Final Zucchini, which is the last practice of the of the of the preseason, right? Well, yeah, I, a, I would call it official band camp is okay. kind of how they do because then. Thursday, they'll still be practicing because yes. they'll have the preview show on Saturday. Like, it doesn't stop until classes start. And then they'll go into their normal Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 5 to 7 practice mm-hmm. routine. Okay. All right. So final day of band camp, then, we'll call it. And uh, that's going to be at the R&P parking lot. That's over by the tennis courts, is that it right? It is by the mm-hmm. tennis courts, Okay. Yes. I got I got my geography right. Mm-hmm. And that'll be – and that first collection's at what time? Uh, we will start collecting at 5 p.m. Mm-hmm. On August 21st. And the second collection will be at the parents' uh, performance show, the parents' preview, right? Yeah, at Miller Stadium. At yes. Miller Stadium, and you'll be set up in the parking lot at, at Miller Stadium then. Yes. At what time? 5, 5, 5 p.m. Five, five, yeah. or 6 p.m. 6 p.m. on, on that Yeah, one. yeah. on that Saturday. All right, and that'll be before the show then, mm-hmm. that, they can, that they can drop them off. If, any, if they can't make any of those times, uh, is there another way that people can either make a financial contribution to this or uh, make a physical contribution of maybe getting those snacks over? Is there, is there another opportunity for that if they can't make those times? Uh, we, we do have it set up within our alumni Facebook group. Okay. So we do have marching band alumni. We have about, I don't know, probably 15 or 1,800 people in that. Mm-hmm. Um, we, have an, we have an avenue for them that they can send us a Venmo. Uh-huh. Um, right now, uh, we haven't expanded outside of our alumni group just because we haven't, uh, we haven't taken the final step to make our uh, Legend Legacy alumni group a Non-profit. A nonprofit organization. So we're Understood. Hoping, yeah. fingers crossed, that that happens in the next week or two. But I gotta say that you, you you've told me that you've had a great response from alumni in the past mm-hmm. to this cause. Yes. 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 Alumni and also um, local local residents. Um, whenever we were at Levity, we got a lot of monetary donations, and we had um, some people leave Levity grab some things and then come back. So, wow, nice. Um, yeah, so that was nice. So uh, this Indiana community is absolutely amazing, and it's my favorite town ever. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and recap the details once again. The first collection is at the final day of band camp, final zucchini, and that's when again? August 21st, August 21st, 5 p.m. 5 p.m. at the R&P lot behind, by the tennis courts. Mm-hmm. The second collection is the following Saturday at Parents Preview Night at George P. Miller Stadium again at 5 p.m., right? 
think uh, five, yeah, I think five, five, five six. Yeah. Five, six, yeah. okay. And if they have any questions, uh, they can find you guys on Facebook then, the Facebook page? Yes. Well, we have, it's, uh, you can go through the Facebook page of the um, IUP Marching Band mm -hmm. and ask any questions, but we also have an Instagram, Legend Legacy, so you can follow us on Legend Legacy, and we also have Legend Legacy Facebook page, too. Legend Legacy on Facebook and Instagram. Yep. Excellent. Well, thanks, both of you, very much for joining us here on Indiana in the Morning. I hope you collect a lot of goods because those kids, they're working their tails off out there. They deserve it. Thanks again. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. All right. That was Bonnie Waltz and Bethany Felter from the IUP Marching Band uh, Alumni Group joining us here on Indiana in the Morning and our conversation presented by Marcus and Mack, voted Best Personal Injury Law Firm in the Best of Indiana County Contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. That's going to do it for today's edition of Indiana in the Morning. Coming up tomorrow, Bob Pollock of the County Extension Office will join us. And then we'll be talking about, at 845, the Overdose Awareness Vigil. At 910, we'll be joined by our friends at Yarnix Farm at 920, the friends over at PA Career Link, and then John Moses of the Altoona Curve will join us to talk everything Curve Baseball at 945 tomorrow. So tomorrow's going to be another busy day. Hope you'll be able to join us for the most informative four hours on Indiana Radio. That is Indiana in the morning. So I'll see you tomorrow morning. Josh Whittison, as always. Thanks for listening. Guys, why isn't the frame up on the Smith house? Sorry, boss, but a bunch of the two by sixes we bought were warped. What? A roam framing lumber is never warped. But we didn't get this load at our own lumber. Remember, we wanted to try and save a few bucks, so we went up the road. Guys, that's it. No more inferior products. From now on, it's only our own lumber. When building and remodeling, insist on the best. Our own lumber and hardware. Lucerne Road in Homer City. Dedicated to quality. Dedicated to you. Hey folks, this is Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality and best-selling author. If you don't know what you're passionate about or you dread going to work on Mondays, you're not alone. But it doesn't have to be that way. I'm here to help you find the work that you were created to do, right here on The Ramsey Show. Tune in for The Ramsey Show every afternoon from 1 to 3 on AM 1160 WCCS and also on 101.1 FM. 1 FM and AM 1160.